How's it going guys? Matt here with the Merle Gaming. Today I'm going to show you some auto locker tricks with the industrial stuff. I've shown you all kinds of things in the past, which some of them you'll kind of need to know as a prerequisite, such as some of the sorting and pulling comes in handy. It's not absolutely must know depending on how you do it, but uh, it sure helps to have the knowledge. But at some point in your industrial career or setup or whatever you may call it, your group, or maybe just you, depending if you're just a solo, uh, you're going to want auto lockers, lockers that auto fill with kits from your storage. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that and some tricks with it that are pretty cool. So obviously you do need a locker. You can put an adapter on each slot because of course there are three slots. Uh, we're really only going to work about con work on uh, configuring just the one for simplicity's sake. And we're going to put an adapter with it. Now, um, yeah, I'm just going to give you kind of my my rundown. I'm going to be a little bit more verbose. Usually I like to put the conveyor above it, but that kind of presents a problem of, well, you can't really reach the conveyor too well sometimes. Here you can, and it's fine. Um, but also it is just, just as much fine to put it on the ceiling above it like so, I think. As long, I like to line it up so that you can kind of tell which one goes with it intuitively. Of course, you could always follow the pipes, but if you're hiding the pipes, then that's not such a great method. Or you could just color the pipes. I often just color the pipes for this. So if my teammates are wondering which one goes to which, they can just look at the color on this and this, and voila, you can tell exactly which one it is. No big deal. So obviously it needs to... Uh, oops, I got the wrong side connected to the wrong side here. The input needs to go to your storage array. A lot more on that on the earlier episodes if you haven't seen them. But for sake of example here, we're going to pretend our storage array is deep somewhere in our bunker, well protected. And that will symbolize this side. This will be our safe storage area, if you will. And of course you can employ all kinds of tricks to do that. Some of which I've shown, and I actually have quite a few more to show so stay tuned if you want more industrial knowledge i got them coming keep hitting that subscribe and like button it does help a lot and it helps me push these out a little bit faster and higher on the priority list but uh for now i'm just going to take this one box um and that'll be good enough for this example and we'll put it as the out but of course if you watch the earlier videos you know this could be a whole bunch of boxes that it actually pulls from uh, all right, but it's got to get the items from somewhere is the point. And usually you have a drop, a drop somewhere to push back into your uh, safe storage area, usually somewhere near the entry of your compound or entry of your base or your work area or something. Recently, I've been really liking to use these barrels as drops, and it symbolizes pretty well. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, teammates seem to understand pretty simply and intuitively that, hey, if you see a barrel uh, with a one of these on it, you know it's a drop. So, um, you, you, it's it's all up to opinion though. But of course, you just take the out. And uh, well, we're gonna go to a combiner here, and we're gonna have. Well, I'll do it over here. It's just kind of a little bit of a drop array, a small tree, if you will, like so. And we'll say, okay. Because I kind of do want to get the full system up to show you the full thing. Although I'm maybe taken away slightly from the point of this. But it is all related in some way. Uh, because, well, you'll see. You'll see. Okay. So we're saying this conveyor goes to this locker. And we want it to pull from our storage over there. And fill with our goods as we see fit. And... That is, of course, exactly what you put in your conveyor. Now, let's say we want a road sign kit. So we're just going to put in all the road sign stuff. Do a nice tier two. I love having one of these in the locker. It's very nice. Uh, it's also nice to maybe just have a hazmat instead of all this armor, too. Uh, you do as you please with this. But keep in mind, you can only have 12 items here, right? And seven. you got seven armor slots. you got this uh, this backpack slot. And you got six slots here so if you count them all up that's 14 slots you can't exactly fill them all evenly so usually what i end up doing is, is i end up putting like four meds uh or something to 
it only takes one slot here, but it fills up several of those. So I'm getting a little sidetracked. All right, I'm going to fill this out and then I'll get back with you. Okay, I filled it all out with a nice road sign kit, road sign jacket, coffee can helmet, road sign kilt, hoodie, pants, boots, road sign gloves. And I also put in here some tier two weapons that are pretty meta and people tend to, to like for the tier two at least. The semi-auto rifle, the Thompson, 64 bullets for each and a medical syringe. So that's what this thing is going to try to pull. Uh, of course we need to power it. Uh, this isn't going to be about power. So in our case, I am just going to plop down this test gen and just get a quick quick enough working example um, for, for us here. And we're going to use the dynamic right side that will pull up to 100 watts right now. And make sure you wire it to the power input, not the turn on or anything else. Um, more on all that stuff later. I do have, I do use those some in my stuff. I just haven't gotten to it yet because I feel like it's kind of complicated at times. But no matter. We got it hooked up. We got it turned on. We got it hooked to a box. So now, as long as we turn this on, it should start pulling. Now I haven't actually put any of those items in the box, but. It will basically pull all this stuff into the into these slots. One, two, three, four, five. We got six of these. Am I looking at this right? There should be one am I missing? I'm missing one item, I think. Uh something. No, that's right. There's seven items there. I just forgot how to count. Okay. Um let me go ahead. Uh, there's another thing I need to do to kind of show this properly. And that is, uh, I gotta fill this with the items. And also, we want the drop to go back into our storage array system, which is just currently represented by this single box. Alright, very well. I'm gonna fill this box with relevant stuff so you can actually see it working. And I'll get back to you as soon as we're, we got that ready. Alright, very good. I've uh, got all the items ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and just throw them in here to our storage area. And uh, now once we turn this on, it'll just fill this up as you would as you would kind of expect. Right? There's a few more tricks to show here. So of course normally you like hit swap on these. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're setting it up quite like this because you probably don't want both these weapons right. I mean you can and then just put back where you don't need or whatever, but uh, just hold alt and scan over these with your hover loot and that works just as well for the armor. Skips it right away and you just grab what you want here. And as you'll see, it will refill the missing slots as long as we have more stuff available and more ammo available naturally. And if we take some syringes, it'll fill back with another four. Obviously in vanilla, they don't stack like that. So uh, you probably know that though. Okay, but here's the other thing that always happens inevitably. Someone does hit swap, right? And they end up throwing like torches and all kinds of just random stuff in here and it messes up your slots because obviously it can't it doesn't know what to do with these it's just going to pull in some of the stuff right so what we need here is uh well we got this drop sorter um let's just have it be this for now that wired up real quick. In fact, I'll just throw down another test gen because I'm lazy over here. One for this side. And we're just going to wire it directly because we're being lazy. This isn't about electrical right now. So with no filters, this is just going to pull everything. And it'll just pull everything from this barrel and put it into that box. Usually you want some kind of filter or you, you know, you do your sword in array as I showed in earlier videos. But if we just generically wanted to accept anything, we can do that. And that will then put it back into here. Throw those out for a second. And you'll see that it will fill these slots once we empty them. There, there it is. So here's the thing. So what do you do about people putting torches and rocks in these autofill slots? You can tell everybody, hey, don't mess with this one. It's an auto locker. If you mess up the slots, it's gonna mess up the thing. But just trust me on this. People are going to mess it up anyway. You're going to mess it up anyway because, you know, things happen in Rust. You're getting raided. You don't have time. You just got to grab stuff and go, etc. 
and uh, it happens. So it's not exactly a reliable method to just tell people uh, how to operate it because it just it never it never lasts and it always always goes haywire. So what you can do, you got this output slot. Well, you could say you might think, okay, I'll just I'll just hook it to this drop, right? But then, uh, you know, it's going to just pull everything out of it and just endlessly cycle, basically. Right, because it goes back into that and then it pulls it back in and it's just going to cycle back and forth. And, well, that doesn't work. Okay, so we can't do that. But there is a good way. Now, check this out. This is actually really cool. This is super cool. So you got this drop box here, right? It only has its outfilled. Um... If it has its end filled with some other logic you got going on, you can just add another one to it. But we're just going to use the one that's already there. Actually, we don't want to use the one that's already there. That'll cause problems because it is linked to this puller, and it'll just pull everything, and it'll still mess up our locker for what I'm about to do. So let's make a separate one, and this will, in theory, this will be on its own little separate logic. Uh, and we do this. We have a second one for this. Probably want to hide this one because you don't want people to mess with this one. I don't know. We'll just say we'll just hide it over here, I guess. I don't know. For sake of example, I'm going to leave it close. But this, this is the uh, the one that that fixes the bad slots basically. And now what I've seen people do in the past is they just put like rock and torch in here, not rocket, just rock and torch. But that's not actually the best way. Um, let me let me show you. Okay, so the input uh, comes from this locker, so we want to be pulling the bad things out, and the output is going to go into one of our drop boxes specifically, and it's going to be on a different one than this industrial adapter, and it does have to be a di different adapter than the one that's going to your main storage array. Now, if none of this is making sense, you might be behind. This is a bit more advanced, so either bear with me and, I don't know, keep learning, or watch their earlier videos or whatnot. I don't know. You, t you, you tell me where you're lost and maybe I can help. We'll go from there. Okay, so what the better way to do this, now that we have all this hooked up, we got the out going to this one to fix the slots and it going into a drop box, and then the drop box will handle it accordingly from there and do the sorting. You go to your original one that has all the stuff you like, and you hit copy. Then you go to this other one, and you paste it in there. Now you might think, okay, well that's not going to work right. Except you change this filter mode to exclude listed items. It means it, it won't touch any of these items, but everything else it will. That's perfect for this scenario. Absolutely perfect. So let's get this conveyor some power. Let this pass through here. Uh, it and turn it on. And now what you're going to find is that if I put the wrong items in there, like like so, just hit swap and get all this stuff. It's going to say, okay, everything that doesn't belong, I'm going to pull it out. That's the exclude mode. So, yeah, you can just copy pasta in the exclude mode, and it'll fix it for you. It puts it in the Dropbox. Dropbox sorts it accordingly and into here. And it goes for our stuff. And voila, that way it keeps these slots empty so that it can fill with what it needs, which is this stuff I'm going to throw back in, for example. Now you might see that it's got too much ammo. It doesn't really handle counts. Like it's not gonna handle the count of the uh, uh, pistol bullets. So if you fill 128, it's gonna, you know, which is fine. That's not really a big deal in my opinion. But there you go. That's how you do it. So let's just do the rock and torch thing. Because this is usually what happens. Someone spawns. They got a rock and torch in there, hot bar only. They run up to a locker, they need a kit, they hit swap, it does that. Now watch what happens. Whoop, takes them out, because they're not part of that, and it goes in here. And that sorts it. I personally don't sort those any further, but since we're doing an all mode on the uh, that box over there, it's going to take rocks and torches. And that way it clears the slots, and be able to fill with the good stuff. So that's the main thing, that's the main cool way to do lockers. I often, I don't know, if I'm a small group, if it's just like me and one other guy, I usually don't I usually don't mess with this part of it, the the fixer, but if you're with a big group, uh, you want to spend the extra watt, an extra conveyor, to sort this out, because it gets a little more chaotic. 
so yeah, that's how you do lockers basically. Uh, I'll give you a few more tips now, but uh, that's that's the big thing right there is that. <laughs> so that's super cool, you know. You just as you're doing your wipe, this is always going to fill as long as you've got it available. Um, another thing you might notice is, hey, there's other stuff I probably want. Like maybe I want grenades or maybe I want some different kit options. All right, very well. You just uh, do more of these. Now, at this point, you probably do want a splitter. I did uh, show the tree method at one point. You just come off that tree, come to a splitter, and uh, fill these all out. And uh, we'll get it fixed here. And you want to do the same thing with those two. So bear with me a sec. I'm going to get these all just uh, wired up here. I want the out to go to this. Out to go to this. And now the input here, rather than going to just the one, it's going to go to this splitter. So you probably want a splitter to handle for locker. Because it works and it lines up nicely with the three. Three locker slots, three conveyors here. There we go. Now they are all three ready to pull from your storage array. And let's just go ahead and uh, sort this power out. I'm not going to be too... Uh, meticulous about it. I'm just gonna do it quickly basically. As long as we can find the right ones, we're good. There we go. And now you just want to fill them out. Um, I usually end up doing something like this. Like one of these has hazmat and along with hazmat, I usually do like a the heavy plate or something like that. You know, just some other accessories because you got seven slots there. You might as well fill them all out. And yeah, you know, you've got a couple more slots. Maybe you want a little wolf helm going down there. Maybe you want one other thing that you commonly like to wear. Uh, you decide. I can't think of anything right now. But maybe also you want your assault rifles available. And uh, yeah, I don't know. You tell me. What else do you want here? Uh, you got some more slots, so you got to work with what you have, you know, the 12 slots here in this conveyor, and the specific slots you got here, the 7 armor slots, etc. And uh, you got another one here. I usually like to do grenades. Those are handy to have at the ready. I also like to do the key cards and fuses. Those are handy to have at the ready. Two fuses and the key cards. That way if someone wants to run a monument, they can just grab and go very quickly. And I typically don't worry about any crafting stuff in these because those usually go to one of these pullers beneath a tier two or a tier three, and that's where you get your low grade and stuff. So I usually don't do low grade here, although it almost kind of makes sense for the monument running part sometimes. But uh, yeah, that's that's why. So anyway, let's. I know I'm getting a little scattered here, but let's just finish cooking this part up. Um, these outputs to these and of course these all go to a the same place but now rather than running the pipes three times into this it's not possible right so you need one of these combiners I'll just do it right here and you run all of these out ones let's do a full cancel on this if it'll let me there we go. Just run all of them to this. And then finally, do one of your drop boxes. Now, could this go back into the storage array? I thought I bit up. There we go. Could this go back into the storage array over into this? No. Because it's already got a sorter. You can't go from one sorter or one conveyor into another conveyor. That doesn't really logic out, right? You gotta go into some kind of intermediary box so these drop boxes that you have anyway work perfect to drop barrels i guess in this case and now uh let's you know we got a few things here you want to fill out as you want of course uh naturally you want the metal face plate and stuff here ready uh chest metal chest and uh usually you want it sometimes you need a jacket so you might have a jacket here and anything else you can think of that could be relevant. The, the wood leg armor, if you're in the snow area, often comes into play. You want to 
you want to use that sometimes. And uh, there's tactical gloves, and there's other stuff. We don't need to do all of that right now. Uh, just enough for you to get the point. But I will throw a bolt action on here too, because I like having those ready. Um, so now, same thing. You take this one, you do a copy, right? Make sure you get that copy. And you take the this puller or the uh, the fixer one, I guess we'll call it a fixer, and paste it in there. Same with this other one, do a copy. Um, paste it into this other fixer one. Now make sure you put these on exclude mode. These, uh, we call them, we'll call them fixer ones. Fix your slots. And then just turn them all on. Uh, I'm going to go throw a few more things in this drop box and pause the video while I do that just to show you some quick examples. Alright, I got some of this stuff. I don't think I got everything here, but, you know, I got a lot of it, so I'm just going to... Okay, pretend, I don't know, maybe you run in from a grub run and you got this weird kid on and etc. Um, doesn't matter too much. I don't know. We're just, we got stuff. We got stuff. Alright, and yeah, you do want to occasionally throw all that stuff out. Those will sit in your drop box if you, you know, for sake of uh, example, we're going to, oh, never mind. I was thinking we were going to put this on exclude mode and not accept torches and stuff, but whatever. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, but as you can see, it's already started to pull things in from what I sorted. But, you know, someone's going to do this. Someone's going to go, ooh, I want this helm. And they're going to swap this stupid bucket helmet here. And so it wouldn't fill with another uh, coffee can helmet because it doesn't have the slot. But yeah, now it will because, because of these uh, the fixers. So that's basically it, and that's uh, most of the examples. So I'll throw some of these key cards in here. And I uh, just want to show you that if you, you know, you do this, you put all this goofy stuff in here, it uh, gets it out of there for you. Essentially kind of turns this into somewhat of a drop box itself. As long as we've got that stuff in our storage, it'll come back in. And, you know, if you're loaded and you got tons of stuff, you're, you'll are you have it. You'll have extras, probably. But uh, that's that's the big point. Maybe you try to throw a barrel in here, and it's like, nope. You know? All right, I'm really drilling home the point, I feel like, at this point. But that's how you can do it. It only takes six watts there to do. And it is super cool. Once you have this set up, your wipe becomes way different. Getting out of your base becomes so easy. Uh, you don't have to run around putting stuff in certain areas or anything and getting all messy. You just, hey, let's go run, uh, I don't know, tunnels or something. You go boom, boom, boom. You're ready to go. And then you say, okay, we're also going to go get a red card, grab this and this. And, you know, there should be a fuse and stuff there too, but I didn't I didn't get all the items. I kind of ran out of space when I was trying to get them. So. But you get the point. I don't think I need to go into much more detail. Uh, very cool. Very cool stuff super neat to have in your base and also super cool because well just like a lot of the point of this and this has saved me on several from on several raids you know usually your locker is somewhere near your exit and they might get your locker but if it's locked they have to break it so that these poolers don't go anywhere anymore but they still don't have all your main loot and if they be or if you leave it unlocked and they i don't know I'm going to say, hey, if they accidentally throw stuff in your drop box and go into your core, that would be kind of funny. That's uh, not super likely, but, you know, it could it could happen. It could happen. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you think about these auto lockers and the, uh, the little fixer ones going on. I think it's super cool. And it's definitely really nice for big groups to have your industrial guy set this sort of thing up for your team so your team can just be like, all right, let's go hit the swap button or whatever doesn't matter if they mess it up. You don't have to give everyone specific instructions. You just got to let them know, hey, if you put items that don't belong there, they're going to get thrown back into the drop. And you got to pull them if you want them again. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. And uh, I guess, you know, don't forget to hit the subscribe and stuff if you want to see more of this stuff. I got a lot more tips. I got a lot more electrical stuff on the cooker. Just haven't really had the time. Your support means a lot. If you want to go the extra mile, do the Patreon thing. That would be huge. Uh, I have a few epic supporters on there that have really actually made the difference for me continuing this channel uh, back in the day. So 
I probably wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. So thank you. I'll say your names because I remember all you guys right now. It's uh, it's Gladiator. It's Tombo. It's Zero Cool Matt and Silent John Bob. All you guys. Huge, huge thanks for supporting me before my channel ever gets monetized and just helping me actually be able to continue this kind of stuff for everybody. All right. See you in the next one. Peace out.